Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Professor Paul Lee. Today I am talking to you about platelet rich plasma. I hope you will enjoy my lunchtime presentation. So, first of all, let's make a start. Um, what is PRP? PRP is platelet rich plasma. So, it is just like a cocktail of growth factors and goodies in the body. I think it's very appropriate after lunch. Um, it's a nice, nice cocktails on the side. Uh, so what we are trying to do in platelet rich plasma is taking the growth factors and the cytokines within the blood and try to use that for medicinal and therapeutic purposes. There are many different claims about what PRP can do and what they are. And we go for a little bit of an, and you can have a little think what do you think PRP is and what is the evidence and how does it work? I'm going to keep it relatively simple. It's a, it's a lunchtime session, so it's not going to be too much information. I hope you will enjoy this. Uh, so what, first of all, what PRP is not first is very important. PRP is definitely not stem cells. There may be clinics along the street or maybe hear some people say that they have uh, stem cells injection into their body and certainly PRP is not a stem cell injection. There are currently no stem cell injection in the market uh, that we can easily produce. And people may say that sometimes you take blood or maybe I ask for bone marrow uh, and then I can uh, set, uh, concentrate it to a stem cells. It is not entirely true. Strictly speaking, there are currently no stem cells injection in musculoskeletal um, medicine within the UK that is legal. Uh, there are other things that they are cell therapy, but certainly the stem work shouldn't really be used. Uh, and this is a very interesting program recently on the BBC4, Radio 4, and um, I encourage you to listen to it. It's quite interesting and uh, enlightening. So, why do we want to talk about PRP? So we say that what is it? What is in it? You know, so it uh, the cytokines as well as the growth factors that's in the PRP, and the, why we want to use it because these are tailored to ourselves. If we can get blood from you know one person and the growth factors and the cytokines is tailored to that person, it is autologous. So therefore, you're not going to be allergic to it. It is very forgiving. It give, it give healing potential to the body and depends what paper you read and depends which lab that you go to. Some uh, paper would say that PRP have an anti-inflammatory property and some paper would say that PRP have a pro-inflammatory property. Now, I think it really is down to what we have got in our blood in our, in, at that moment when we take the PRP out. It can have anti-inflammatory, it can have pro-inflammatory properties, depends how we process it as well. So all these things are extremely complicated and there are so many different types of PRP on the market. How can we choose what to use and when to do what? It is quite difficult because I would say 15 years ago, the, the PRP is only be able to produce in the lab, but now everybody, every clinic probably will have one. How, how do we know it's effective? How, how can we choose the right one? But the most important thing, I suppose, you know, according to, to you know, our, our, our um, excuse me, <coughs> we must first do no harm uh, for our patient. So one thing that for sure is PRP is relatively safe and is autologous. At the worst case scenario, we are just injecting some serum into the body. It is one way that I tell my patient is about giving a bruise to an area that is injured and to trigger the response to try to ask the body to heal itself. Some athletes refer that to a blood bomb injection. So let's go to how we can produce this PRP. There are different ways. You can make it very complex. You can get it very simple and you can have massive machinery to produce that PRP. But commonly, what people tend to use is a centrifuge and we put the blood in and we spin it. Now, PRP is not 
new. It has been around for a very, 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 very long time. And I'm sure you would have used it in medical school. You have used the uh, you, you used the hematology thing in, in, in medical school as well. Um, it, it traditionally PRP is separated by gravity and we used to call them ESR. And that's how we produce ESR. Uh, we put a blood in the tube and wait for the rest cells to settle and then the stuff at the top is PRP pretty much. Now, of course, life has moved on and things get a little bit more sophisticated than, than just we're leaving things to rest for an hour and take the stuff from the top. And, um, and this is typically how we produce a PRP. We take it from, the, uh, from a blood bottle and then we spin it and then um, we can collect the the, and then we can collect the, blood, uh, the the PRP from the top and then we inject. Now, the science of the PRP is about, is then further divided into which layer of blood or of serum that you take. Some people will call that, yeah, you know, you want to take the Buffy coat, uh, which is the layer that between the red cell and the serum. And that will have the highest concentration of platelet logic will say that. Um, however, that's not entirely true. And it's not, and also the higher the platelet concentration may not be the best things for your patient. There are more than just platelets. I know this called PRP platelet rich plasma, but now this term has become more of a loose term. It's more like blood without the red cell, pretty much, because there are many different ways to produce it. And platelet rich plasma. By definition, it's true because you, if you have the smaller volume that uh, removes of the red cell, therefore things are more. Your platelet is more concentrated than your blood in that small amount of serum. So strictly, you can call everything PRP. But then there are many different terms that come into this terminology. You got PRP, PPP, PRF, and all sorts of different different um, terminology coming to PRP. The other interesting thing is, of course, you would know that from the medical school days it, when we're le learning about the ESR, the um, erucite uh, sedimental rate, what happened is that if there are more stuff in your blood, more immunoglobulin uh, in your blood, more protein in your blood, that ESR is higher, which means that the, the, the blood, the red cell go down faster. That means there are more serum stuff in there. And so therefore there are more chemicals and more um, cytokines within that serum. So I think it's very, very difficult to generalize PRP because it all depends on what the condition of that blood is and uh, on, the, on the time that you take in that blood and the way that you process it, whether you use a centrifuge, how fast the centrifuge is, is it this system that we use or is it a sorry different system that we use uh, with a syringe and syringe model? Again, this is another popular model that uh, uh, that people use for PRP. Uh, and then, of course, if you speak to the manufacturer, they will say, "Yeah, mine is better than yours." Um, and, and and of course, you know, it is uh, it is down to many many factors. And again, there are more fancy PRP devices out there. You get one tube, two tube, some device designed specifically that to to help the clinician to produce this buffy coat in the middle and there are some fancy screwing device to get things out in a slightly different way. Now all these are good, all these are fun, all these are, are pretty, but actually does it make too much of a difference uh, what layer of buffy coat that you take, whether that there is white blood cell in it or there's no white blood cell in it, does it make too much of a difference or too little a difference? I think what will make the, the biggest difference is probably down to what your patient got in the first place. If they got, so we say, good blood with good growth factors in their blood, then the stuff that you get from there has got to be good and vice versa. So I think optimization of the general health will be very important before we even think about PRP. So what I tend to do is pre-PRP injection, we want to counsel the patient, advise them to have a relatively clean and healthy uh, week before we draw the blood and inject. And and then afterward, we want to try to give them the best chance to uh, ask to let the body to heal. Now, so I think that's more important than which type of PRP we use, which layer we take and which machine that we use to count, which platelets and which cells that we put in. You know, we there are very, we got some very, very sophisticated uh, cell cytometer to actually isolate and, and increase and reproduce the amount of, of uh, growth factors and we can even incubate them to hope that there will be more growth factor to release. But 
with the post blood well i suppose pro, post production of prp is not going to be as good as what you actually got in your blood if you've got a good raw material to start off it's got to be better right let me swiftly move on to uh, the evidence of PRP. So you say, well, is there any evidence on PRP? Uh, we, what, what do we use them to treat? We use the, use the PRP to treat um, musculoskeletal condition. Uh, we use it to treat, or I use it to treat as muscle tear. I use it to treat tendon injury, um, ligament injury, osseous pubis, and sometimes arthritis. But then the, there are different type of PRP in different concentrate that we use and we mix with different things. I do not think that if you just use one single simple PRP will not fit for all these sort of conditions because different muscle or different ligament will have different properties. As you know, there are different cells with different properties, so their nutritional need is very different. But if we're looking at a overall general uh, generalization and look so the best thing to do is look at meta-analysis to see does it actually work so I just picked out two um, RCT uh, sorry RCT randomized control trial uh, and meta-analysis with those RCT it actually have shown that this is this one here uh, on the left is about the total about knee osteoarthritis this PRP work it's clearly show that it does work in meta-analysis uh, this is just one of the graph there's many many graph in that meta-analysis I don't want to bombard you with too too much information and then on the other side is does it work on tendons and um, you can see clearly you know it it is favor of the you know compared to control compared to placebo uh, most most trials have proved a positive result um, so certainly it is not something we, we need to think about what we're doing um, certainly it's not something that would do any harm to the patient in terms of uh, introduce a drug into the body or introducing an allergic um, uh, allergic effect or or any other issues. Um, so I think it's relatively safe things to use. We have good experience of using the PRP already and uh, it, it's, it is well tolerated. Um, now, the next question then is, you know, as I explained to you earlier on, PRP is not all the same. There's so many different uh, type of PRP. Now here's our key slide here. So that's the take home message I want to, want to give uh, this afternoon is that they are leukocyte rich, leukocyte poor PRP, so whether that you want the PRP to trigger inflammation or not to trigger inflammation, you want it, so you, it depends how much leukocyte you put in. In some condition, you want to use the leukocyte rich, in some condition, you want to use the leukocyte poor, uh, and they, they work very differently. They are, as I say earlier on, depends how we produce, process that PRP, you can have tailored rich plasma, which is PRP, LR stands for leukocyte rich and LP stands for leukocyte poor. So many acronyms, but then I suppose if you write it out, it would be like a whole page of just words. Uh, then you get, we get our PPP. So in the industry, that stands for paleo poor plasma. Again, you can we can add your leukocyte in it if you wanted to or not. Now the next new kit on the block, which are coming and uh, is is more powerful and is more useful user friendly. I would say is the PRF. Uh, so that stands for platelet rich fibrin. So basically, that is a clot uh, that make, make the PRP to stay in, in the, that active substance to stay in that area for a little bit longer. Uh, and of course, we are mixing this PRP or this, this serum, shall we say, with either hyaluronan, cross-link hyaluronan, steroid, or even fat cells sometimes. Depends what we're doing, depends uh, what is needed for that patient, we can tailor and we can make a best book injection uh, to suit that patient for that condition. And the key here I want to say is depends how we process this PRP uh, and also when we take that PRP, how often we're going to inject this patient. Is it has to be free injection? Is it one injection will do or is it free injection? I think the answer is depends what condition we're treating and depends what um, PRP or PRF or PPP that you're using. Some some process and some some way that we can produce this PRP, we can actually make things stay for longer. So one injection is enough, but some other way of preparation, things are more liquidy. So once we inject it, they tend to go away very quickly. And sometimes if we mix it with some drugs, they will have a slightly longer metabolic effect into the system. So actually one injection may be enough. So it really depends. And again, 
there are so much variation of diff what, what we can do to that PRP. Is that what sort of plastic tube that we're taking the blood from? Is it is it from a vacuum container? Is it from a syringe? Is it from a plastic syringe? Is it from a metal syringe? Or is it from a glass syringe? It all have a huge influence on the amount of growth factors and amount of cytokines produced by that that uh, that that medium. Uh, spinning force in another, another good one. Uh, is it is it six thousand newton? You want to spin it, or is it three thousand five hundred? It there is many variation. Uh, now the latest thing on the market is shall we spin these blood horizontally? or spin them slightly at an angle. And, and there's a new machine that will spin things vertically as well. Um, they all produce slightly different characteristic of the of the PRP. Uh, some of them will make the blood more focused on the buffy coat. The PRP, they play the more focus on the buffy coat. And some of them actually make it more even. Um, so there are so many different variation within it. But one thing, the big take home message is that PRP is not stem cells. Um, so that's really is my uh, main take home message. And finally, uh, when you know in, in 108, when did we use PRP to treat uh, what condition? Uh, we treat patient with sports injury. Uh, usually we do it with a subacute phase or chronic phase or MSK injury. We do not use PRP on acute, um, acute musculoskeletal injury because it's completely pointless because the body usually have their own bleeding, they got bruises there already, so the patient got their own PRP, so it's kind of no point to put more into that area. If things fail to heal subacutely, then yes, we may want to give it a push, or if something in chronic, we want to re reignite that fire to trigger the body to respond. Uh, cartilage injury, I tend to use the PRP a lot. One of the other things that we do here is uh, cartilage regeneration, and with those patients, these cartilage need extra nutrient because we once we finish surgery with them, when we, once we finish cartilage implantation, we want to give these cartilage extra signal. So by doing so, we by doing PRP into the into the area, we can actually reignite those cartilage and tell give them the nutrient, give them the right signal to proliferate to grow. Uh, sometimes we use it for regeneration, so that, that's the regeneration sort of treatment that we use after surgical repair. Uh, we do supplement things, uh, but it depends on what we do. What we do. Uh, arthritis, uh, there is effectiveness has been proven uh, in arthritis, but it's not hugely effective. It does have a difference. It does have a significant difference, but I am not sure by just simply injecting PRP alone, into the joint will have a huge clinical difference. Um, they are statistically significant, but then the improve of pain scale is not that great. However, if you mix the PRP with some of the other stuff together, uh, that certainly have enhanced the effect of the PRP as well as the, sub the other substance such as HA, uh, hyaluronan uh, or hyaluronic acid, some people call it, uh, or steroid. Even mixing PRP with steroid have a good effect. Uh, on treating arthritis. This is something that is quite new. Uh, beforehand, people think that, well, steroids anti-inflammatory, PRP is uh, pro-inflammatory, you can mix the two together, you cancel each other out. Actually, that is not the case at all. Um, the PRP is not a pro-inflammatory uh, marker. It is, if you prepare it right, it is a cytokines in the body to help the body to regenerate and to uh, to give the signal to the body to try to heal. The steroid do have an anti-inflammatory effect, uh, but by putting blind steroid in, uh, not blind steroid, I suppose we just, as neat steroid is a word, uh, that is very acidic. So sometimes the PRP, the, the serum there, is a good thing to neutralize those steroids. So there are many things that we can do, and there are many things that we can mix into treat different things differently. And finally, this one, our patient, that is one of our clinical research that she had a PRP injection. Hi, Paul. Right, so we had an injection uh, in um, two weeks ago. We did. Yeah, yep, and we did. How, how, is it, how is it going? So I'm really, really pleased with it. Uh, first and foremost, it, it wasn't painful, so you were very gentle. I was very pleased about that. And then instantly I had less creaking, less grinding of the joints. And then since then, it's been a week, I have managed to do a 26 mile bike ride at the weekend. Um, so I'm really, really pleased so far. Amazing. Well, thank you, Cheryl. So there we go. That's one of my patient testimonial, but uh, it is just a that is just from that one person. We do do uh, PRP injection for 
uh, patient that with osteitis pubis and uh, with arthritis and with tendon injury, result is very good and uh, the feedback is very positive. And I'm, I'm, so here is my short lecture on platelet-rich plasma. Uh, if there's any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you.